Okay, in uh, this video, I want to take a look at again two induction proofs uh, using a recurrence relation uh, to prove both upper and lower bounds on that recurrence relation. Um, and the recurrence relation that we're working with here is one we got from a recursive version of insertion sort, where we make one recursive call of size uh, n minus one, and then we do a little bit of extra work a linear amount of extra work as we see here. Okay. And again I want to do upper and lower bounds but I'm going to start with the upper lower bound here. Maybe I'll just comment. Uh, so this proof is to show that T of n is n big O of uh, n. Uh, okay uh, and I put n and that's obviously my first error. Uh, it should be uh, n squared so good thing I caught that. My insertion sort is an n squared algorithm. Uh, so, hey, here's a good good uh, lesson. Uh, if we had tried to prove it was less than or equal to b times n, we would have failed miserably because it's false. Okay, it's kind of clear here. Maybe some of you might be able to uh, argue very quickly that this is not going to be less than or equal to b times n. So, because that's the case, uh, we would have definitely fumbled there. But here we are. I'm going to change it to n squared. That's correct now. Uh, hopefully we don't fumble. Keep in mind we might fumble. We don't always get the perfect proof the first time around. Uh, so because of that, if we do fumble, we'll come back and we'll fix, that, fix any errors we've got. Uh, let's look at our, our first case here, our base case. I've chosen n equals 1. Why not? If it works, it works. If it doesn't, we'll try a different base case. Uh, what do we need to prove here? Well, we need to prove that t of 1, which by definition is c. I didn't include that up here, but again, hopefully uh, recall we recall that. We need to show that this is less than or equal to b times n squared. Uh, keeping in mind here, uh, n squared is just uh, 1 squared here, or 1, so that's just b. So we might just say, hey, let's pick a b that satisfies this condition. So again, check this is correct as long as we find a b that satisfies that. Okay, so that's the base case. Let's continue with our inductive hypothesis. Okay, so our inductive hypothesis here states, again, we're going to assume what we're trying to prove, but for restricted values of k, k less than n, so we're just going to again write down what we're trying to prove, t of k is less than or equal to b times k squared. Um, and now that allows us to proceed with our inductive step. And that, of course, carries out uh, when n is greater than 1 for all of our remaining cases. And here we'll just copy down our definition to begin. So t of n, in this case, must be equal to t of n minus 1 uh, plus dn. Okay, so in this proof, our goal uh, is again, maybe down below here, we want to say this is less than or equal to uh, b times n. That's our goal, okay? Our first step here is always to rely, oh, not n, sorry, here I am. Uh, thinking again, it's n squared, so make sure I copy that down right. Uh, but that's my goal down here. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to rely on my inductive hypothesis to replace out my n minus 1 term here. Here we need to be careful. Here we'd say t of, let's maybe write it off on the scratch again in case we need it, t of n minus 1, what would that be equal to according to our uh, inductive hypothesis? That's less than or equal to uh, b times n minus 1 squared. Okay, uh, Keeping in mind here, n minus 1 is indeed a k that's less than n, so that means it applies. So since it applies, we can say, oop, let's do an approximation here, this is less than or equal to b times n minus 1 squared plus dn. Okay, we need to do a little algebra here. So let's square that. Remember that when we square that, we're going to get, well, maybe I'll just write it in brackets here, n squared. We're going to get our minus 2n uh, plus 1 plus dn. Okay. Uh, if you need to go on your scratch and, and uh, multiply that out yourself, make sure it's correct. We're going to get bn squared minus 2bn plus a b plus a dn. And now here, I want to make this last step here. 
Remember, we've sort of been doing these in our proofs. I've been calling this my leap of faith, right? Uh, this is my leap of faith here. I want to make sure this is true. Is this true? Could this be true is maybe a question. Could this be true? Well, this will be le the, 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 uh, the second to last line here is less than or equal to the last line. If we can make this bit here all be negative or zero. Okay, so we want minus 2bn plus b plus dn. We want that to be less than or equal to zero. So again, can we make this true? Now, first thing I want to do before we even get started here is, is it even, does it even seem possible? Okay, could it possibly be true? Now, the reason I'm asking that is, do we have enough on our negative side to cancel out all the stuff on our positive side? Here we have a constant and a linear term. Luckily, our negative term is linear as well. So since it's the same size, it's got the same size on its upper end as the positive term, we can cancel out. If we didn't have this n here, if we had minus 2b, and on the plus side we had an n, there would be no way to get a constant to cancel out a variable. Okay, But let's do a little bit of, this is a little scratch work on the side. I want to uh, maybe gather my terms a little bit more conveniently here and for the sake of what I'm doing here I'm going to leave the positive terms on one side and I'm going to put my, my negative, I'm going to move the minus term on the other side. So what I'm really saying here is that I want my 2bn to be greater than or equal to my b plus dn. Okay, that's what I need to solve. Now again, this is a little tricky because this n is in here. I can't just delete out by n, I get a b over n here. That causes a little bit of problem. So in fact, what I'm going to notice here is I'm going to say, and so everyone verify this yourself, that if I put an n here, I'm going to go one step further. I'm going to back my way out here. Let's just make sure that this bit is true. Okay b plus dn is less than or equal to bn plus dn. Well, that'll be true if our n is greater than 1 or greater than or equal to 1, and that's the case we're in. So yes, so this is true. Okay. Now remember, we want to make this part true. We want, actually, what we want to make is this part true. We want 2bn to be bigger than our b plus dn. By transitivity, if we could make this part, uh, if we could make this part true here, then the part that we want to be true, the bigger arrow here, will be true. So this is actually easier because now all I have is I want my 2bn to be greater than or equal to my bn plus my dn. Okay, well why don't I cancel one bn off each side? Now my bn must be greater than or equal to my dn. Oh great, let's cancel our n's out too. My b must be greater than or equal to d. That's a nice simple condition, easy to calculate, and it satisf if I satisfy it, my last, my leap of faith here uh, is gonna be true. So um, I maybe need to include that here in my proof. I'm gonna say b must be greater than or equal to d. Sort of a check mark here. Remember, these are my two conditions. So I can say, so let b be what? Well, I need the max of c and d. And then, then we'll just maybe may finish by induction t of n is less than or equal to b times n squared. And we're done. Okay. And a little extra work here to figure out what our b needs to be in this case. But again, using some tricks of approximation, we get there pretty quickly. All right, now uh, let's continue in trying to show the uh, big omega side of our bound now, the lower bound. Uh, again, I've still got my definition here. I've constructed my theorem. Hopefully it will work. If not, we'll, we'll reassess it. Um, and let's start with our base case again here. T of 1 in this case, still equal to C. And now we need to show that's greater than or equal to A times 1 squared 
which was just a another straightforward uh, another straightforward base case here we just need to pick an a less than or equal to c okay so our inductive hypothesis once again we copy down what we're trying to prove but we write it in terms of k because we want it to only be assumed for a restricted values of k so here we'll assume that t of k is greater than or equal to a times k squared um, for k less than n okay and then we'll copy down the definition to get started our t of n here is t of n minus 1 uh, plus this dn and again we want to use the inductive hypothesis in our first step here. So maybe I'll, I'll, again, maybe just writing it down in case we need this on the scratch. What is t of n minus 1 greater than or equal to? It must be a times n minus 1 all squared. So again, we get a n minus 1 all squared plus dn. Okay, let's be careful again. We need to multiply that out. So we'll get our a n squared minus a 2 a n plus an a plus a d n that's the same math we just did in our last proof so again if, if you don't follow please uh, go back and verify that or multiply it out yourself to make sure you do indeed uh, get these values uh, and we're trying to show that this is going to be greater than or equal to a times n squared and again here we've got this strange cancelling out. Now let's do it again like we just did because it's a little bit more work in this last leap of faith. We've got minus 2am plus a plus dn. Last time we wanted this to be less than or equal to zero, now we want this to be greater than or equal to zero. Again I can move my minus 2an on the other side. I now have a plus dn must be greater than or equal to uh, what did I say? 2an. Okay, we actually have that same kind of puzzle or problem as before. We have a constant on one side and we've got, uh, we've got no constant on the other side to cancel out with it. Maybe we'd like these all to be the same type of term, all say linear terms here, but we can't. Now the other thing is making this bigger is not going to help us out now. Promoting this to an makes this bigger. That doesn't help us out. Okay, we want to show that this is less than or equal to this, not less than or equal to something bigger than it. Okay, that's not going to help us. Um, so to show that it's less than or equal to this, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to say, hey, look, that a doesn't even matter to us here. If our 2an was less than or equal to a dn, then we know it's less than or equal to a dn plus a. So maybe I'll add that here again. A plus dn. So again, this is the one we want to prove, but we get it by transitivity if we prove this one. That one's a little easier. We cancel out our n's here. It looks like our d um, is greater than or equal to 2a. Let's, let's make that written in terms of a then. a must be less than or equal to half a d. So we can go in again, a less than or equal to half a d. That's our second condition. So we can say, all right, let what are we going to pick our a to be here? Let's say the min of, um, what do we got here, c and half a d. And then, so, uh, by induction, uh, what did we show? We showed that t of n is greater than or equal to a times n squared for n greater than or equal to 1. And we're done. This proof actually didn't rely on too much more trick other than again we had a little bit of extra work trying to figure out what our A was but other than that uh, the algebra and the technique used in our induction proof is exactly the same as the ones we've looked at before. So please include these two induction proofs as just more examples of doing induction using these uh, recursive runtimes. Uh, I will uh, do this one last time uh, with the merge sort algorithm in my next video. Uh, so thank you for watching this video and we'll see you in the next video.